Hello, dear friends, in a series of some lectures about um, Erasmus ecclesiastical law, in the beginning, I would like to give you an information on the uh, content of the ecclesiastical uh, law today. The content or object of ecclesiastical law today is different than in the past. And for that reason, the name ecclesiastical law is an old one. The term ecclesiastical law concerned in the past, the churches, the law of the churches in uh, European countries. But after the first and the second, and especially after the second world war, when uh, we have an evolution of the um, international human rights law. The content that is the object of the so-called ecclesiastical law is different than in the past. Today, this content or object contains three pillars. The first pillar concerns religious human rights as it is protected on different levels. International level, the national level is divided into global international level and regional international level. Then European Union level and after that national level. Second pillar of the object of the so-called ecclesiastical law. Church and state relations of any kind, and when we speak about church, we mean not only Christian churches, but also all rich communities in general, And third pillar, internal laws of religions. Now I will give some explanations on these three pillars, the object of the so-called ecclesiastical law. First pillar. Protection of human rights on uh, international level, either global or regional. The protection of um, religious human rights on global international law is assured through the United Nations and United Nations related agencies system. The main convention concerning human rights is 
the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. But there are also a lot of conventions, international conventions of human rights, which are special one. For example, for the protection of the rights of women, the rights of uh, migrant workers, against racial discrimination, etc. But except the international conventions on uh, human rights, there are also declarations of the United Nations, the most known, the most important one concerning religious human rights is the Declaration of 1981 of the General Assembly of the United Nations on the elimination of all forms of intolerance and discrimination based on religion or belief. As it is known, the declarations do not produce obligations which are produced only by conventions, international conventions, but Declarations are legal instruments, international instruments from which are resulting commitments for the states. Except this declaration of 1981, It is uh, known, well known, another declaration of 1984, Global Declaration of Human Rights. Global Declaration of Human Rights, despite the fact that it is a declaration as uh, it is concluded from its name, in practice it has acquired a quasi-legal force, as we could uh, say about the Declaration of 1981. As it concerns the Declaration of 1981, it is known that a special reporter on religious freedom of the Commission on Human Rights of the United Nations, when he visits countries to study the situation of religious human rights in the country visited, he uses as his criterion for examining, for judging the application of religious human rights in the country visited the Declaration of uh, 1981 of the General Assembly of the United Nations. Using as criterion this Declaration of 1981, the Special Rapporteur of Rich Freedom examines 
the conformity of the constitution of the country limited, of the country visited. Each laws, each governmental policies, each judgment, the conformity of all of these in national instruments with the declaration of the 1981 of the General Assembly. Because not all the states of the world have signed and confirmed legislatively the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. These two declarations, principally the Declaration of 1984 and secondarily the Declaration of 1981 have assumed a quasi-legal force because we are applied in practice as customs. As it concerns the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, Human Rights Committee, which is uh, a body for the control of implementation of this International Covenant enacts issues, general comments per human rights. Human Rights Committee has enacted, has issued a general comment number 22 of the Article 18 of the International Covenant concerning religious freedom. This general comment contains interpretation and exegesis of the international standards on, see, on uh, religious freedom recognized by the Article 18 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights on Religious Freedom. It concerns the European Convention on Human Rights of 1950 which is in the context of the Council of Europe and which is the main international human rights agreement in this context of Council of Europe we find in this uh, international in this um, uh, European uh, Convention of Human Rights the article 9 on religious freedom and the other articles recognizing other human rights which when they have a religious or non-religious dimension are considered as religious human rights. 
such articles uh, human rights are the right to opinion, the right to assembly, the right to association, etc. In the context of this um, European Convention, they have the Council of Europe. There is uh, a juridical body for the control of the implementation of um, human rights recognized and protected by the European Convention on Human Rights. Human Rights Committee of the United uh, uh, Nations is also a quasi-legal body for the control of the implementation of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights in the context of the United Nations, because as the European Court of uh, Human Rights, the uh, Human Rights Committee accepts recourses which in the context of the Human Rights Committee are not called as recourses but as communications, but it's the same thing. And uh, in the case of the recourses before the European Court of Human Rights, it also in the case of the recourses or communications before the Human Rights Committee, the one or the other legal body, judicial body, follow a judicial procedure for examining the recourses submitted As it concerns Europe as a region of the world, there is also another regional international organization, except Council of Europe. This second Human Rights Organization, the National Human Rights Organization on European regional level is the Organization Security and Cooperation in Europe. This uh, international uh, human rights organization is not a legal one, but a political one. It does not produce international agreements on human rights, but only international commitments. And there is a series of uh, very important declarations of the Organization of Security and Cooperation in Europe concerning human rights, especially religious human rights, that is religious liberty and religious equality and the rights of, uh, among others, religious minorities in European countries. European Union 
to which European uh, states participate. As it is known, it is not an international human rights organization, but it is an interstate union. Neither a federation nor a confederation, almost yet, In the primary law of conventions, that is in the uh, Convention for the Functioning of the European Union, a list of human rights to be protected by the bodies of the European Union when applying European Union law is contained among these human rights protected by that list human rights religious human rights are also incorporated. At the national level, the countries today in Europe and in other continents also protect human rights as constitutional rights. Among these human rights protected constitutionally. Religious human rights also are found now I will give some uh, <coughs> explanations concerning the second pillar of the object of the so-called ecclesiastical law. Second pillar concerns church and state relations of any kind. When we speak about the church, as I have already said, we have to understand not only Christian churches, but also religious communities. And not also churches or religious communities, but also communities of non-believers. Because according to the international law standards on religious human rights, Churches or religious communities have to be protected by the international organizations and also by the states. Equally, the states are obliged to assure an equal protection of religion and non-religion, that is, religious communities and communities of non-believers. And the types of uh, church and state relations are of any kind, as I have said already, that is, 
juridical, cultural, educational, assistential, and so on. I would like to give also some explanations concerning the third pillar of the object of the so-called ecclesiastical law. The third pillar, as it is known already, is uh, the internal laws of uh, religions or religious of our communities are not believers, certainly. The international law on human religious human rights, the constitutions of the states, the laws of the states, have uh, references to the internal laws of religions or communities of non-believers because all these instruments, international or national, do references to internal organization and administration to religious leaders, to religious ministers, to religious laws, to houses of prayers or temples, etc. And all these terms have to be interpreted according to the internal laws of uh, regions. And the constitutions, the constitutional charters or statutes of religious organizations which are prepared by uh, religious communities or communities of non-believers contain a lot of regulations coming from the internal uh, law of religions when these statutes are submitted to the competent state uh, body. When uh, this religious or non-religious organization is going, is applying to acquire a legal uh, personality according to the state laws. Thank you for your attention.